So I hate emo. That's not true. That's a lie. I don't hate emo. I just don't love it the same way I love punk and pop punk. Of all the subgenres of punk rock, I think it's probably the one that gets the most amount of flack, and that's including the cheesiest, most bubblegummy pop punk there is. And I kind of get it. Emo is not for everyone. It's for a certain age demographic. And when you grow out of that age demographic, again, it's a little difficult to get into. Plus, it's got some negative association that I don't think people are completely comfortable with. With that said, the genre is not all bad. And the genre was definitely part of being into pop punk in the early 2000s. It was all part of what I like to call Warp Tour Core. You know, you'd have the metalcore bands next to the old school punk, next to the new school punk, next to the emo and screamo bands. They were all kind of one big happy family, even if they didn't always get along. With all that said, there are some bands that I really, really gravitated towards, and perhaps none more so than Taking Back Sunday. Now, I know, I know, they're like the most cliche of all the emo bands, maybe next to My Chemical Romance, but I absolutely loved this band back in the day and still do to this day. And I'm talking about them today because we are around the 20th anniversary of their debut album, Tell All Your Friends. I say this every time I do a 20-year retrospective, it's amazing to think this was two decades ago, but yeah, this was two decades ago. And I'm here to tell you, this album still holds up really, really well. I have trouble actually explaining why I've gravitated towards them over the years, but I just absolutely love their songs. They resonate. They resonated with me as a young person. They resonate with me now as a very, very old person. And chances are, if you were a fan of emo in the early aughts, this album took a lot of spins in your CD player. And if I could think of a way to describe the album, I'd still align from the song Timberwolves at New Jersey. These words were at worst teenage poetry. Now that's an insult. That's a bit of a diss track, and we'll talk about that a little later. But I think that really describes what this is. It's teenage poetry. It's a little more complex than some of the pop punk stuff that I usually like to talk about on this, but it's still adolescent enough to be made by the kids and for the kids. And I'd make the assumption that part of the reason Taking Back Sunday has had such staying power is that their songs were written from adolescent perspectives, but they can thematically be applied to anyone that has ever been in and out of a relationship, which is pretty much almost everyone. And the music's pretty good, but it's the lyrics that actually make this album an absolute classic. They're communicated in such a powerful way. Also, I think I should note that I initially didn't really care for Taking Back Sunday when I first first heard them, and it was because of the call and response vocals that they're so known for. I just couldn't vibe with it. And now, don't know where we'd be without it because it's perfect in these songs. With all the lineup changes and drama that Taking Back Sunday's had over the years, it's kind of hard to do a history section on them. Maybe that's an idea for a whole other video. But what's important to know is that they formed in Long Island in around 1999, signed with Victory Records in 01, and the spring of 02 released their debut. Oh, oh, and in those intervening years, there's like this major feud between them and Brand New and current members, former members, a woman, perfect emo stuff. And that's me giving no detail on this feud because it's really difficult to parse out the fact from fiction. Maybe that's another idea for a video. Hmm. Anyway, according to the band, the concept of calling this thing Tell All Your Friends is actually taken not only from a song, but a concept. They released a demo and they wanted everyone they gave it to to tell all their friends about it. On that note, it's not out yet at the time of this recording, but there is going to be a 20th anniversary release of a lot of demo versions of these songs, which I'm totally looking forward to digging into whenever that comes out. And as I always say in my videos, what makes a good band is good songs. And I think regardless of your genre of preference, I think these are objectively great songs. And before I get into them, I do want to note that back in 2017, around the 15th anniversary of this release, Billboard actually did a pretty good little write-up ranking all the songs in this album. I only bring that up just to note that I have seen that and I looked at it and I think I have a little bit different perspective. This is less of a ranking and just a rundown of some highlights of each individual songs. I said songs there and it should have been song. Oh well. So with that said, I'll go ahead and just highlight a few lyrics from each song. You know how I do. The opening lyrics here are belted out perfectly. The song can either be about addiction or relationships. I tend to think this goes in the addiction route with lines about hazy eyes and not standing for them anymore, but it could apply to either concept. And I think that applies across this album. There seems to be three central themes. Relationships, as far as significant others go. Relationships, as far as friendships go. And struggles with mental illness and addiction. Bike scene. Before I get into the lyrics, I gotta say, I really love this intro. You know, the da 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 I don't think that's how that sounds. This song really shines lyrically in each verse with lines like, because I could be your best bet, let alone your worst ex. Or in verse 3 we get, 
You've got this silly way of keeping me on the edge of my seat, but you're only counting the clock against the train, and I'm miserable. Or when we close out with, let's never talk about this again, because I didn't want it to mean that much to me. Cute without the E, cut from the team. Alright, some heavy hitters now, and our first song with a video. First off, from a musical perspective, I think this is one of their songs that really could be translated into a lot of other genres of both punk and general rock. And from the start, lyrically, it has absolutely no chill. This is the song where we also get lyrics about telling all of your friends. That, that is in case you've got a gun to your head. Also, the bridge and the outro builds to a nice crescendo under the dueling vocals. Is this their breakout song? I don't know. You can be the judge of that. There's no I in team. Ah, uh, yes. A song that maybe, kind of, sort of, not really, but yeah, addresses the brand new Taking Back Sunday feud. All jokes aside, we need more songs about male friends not getting along. Big deal. I can really appreciate the closing with him screaming, Best friends mean I pulled the trigger. Best friends mean you get what you deserve. Great romances of the 20th century. The strength in this song is in the section when the voice of the female he is having the falling out with is incorporated into the song. I also really like the whole vibe of continuing a relationship that's really run its course, but both parties are, well, going through the motions. Ghost Man on third. It seems to be a consensus that this song is about the struggle with mental illness. It really cuts deep with the references about people not understanding what the vocalist is going through here. Also, the line about being his face versus the bottle and the subsequent lack of feelings really carries an emotional weight here. This is a really good one. Kind of underrated. Timberwolves at New Jersey. Okay, let's lighten the mood with one of their staples. This song is, again, likely about the Taking Back Sunday brand new feud. And by the way, that aside, this video is awesome. I mean, who hasn't watched this a thousand times and done the whole thing in the shower with the hair and making the jiffy pop? Good stuff. And again, we need more emo diss tracks. I guess if Machine Gun Kelly keeps making enemies, we'll get some more, but we really need a lot, lot more of these. And I absolutely love the energy on this song as well. And the slights. Gotta love the slights here. The Blue Channel. Nothing I like more than a good piano intro. And that's not sarcastic. That's true. I like the intro on this thing. But the scorned lover section in the second verse is where this thing really picks up. And I also love how at the end he acknowledges that no matter what she does to him, he's still gonna wait for her call. That's a, I think it's a pretty relatable sentiment. You're so last summer. Oh, hell yeah. Here we are. Here the we are. Do I really need to highlight any other lines? Well, let me get personal for a second. There's a woman in her mid to late 30s, probably has a career, a family, all that good stuff. Hope she's doing well. Don't know what she's up to. At one point in her life, she was texted those lyrics on like a Nokia phone or something like that. That really happened. And I know I'm not the only one. You've texted that as well. Don't lie. In all honesty, this is a, another great song. A classic. Absolutely. And even the title, You're So Last Summer. Like... When you talk about resonating with adolescent relationships, it all goes by the seasons, right? The summers actually dictate what goes on. And you want to have, you know, your new fling for the summer, the old fling from the summer. Or maybe you're nostalgic for the old fling. Also, can we acknowledge that they got Flavor Flav in the video? Like pre-re-emergent Flavor Flav? Like when he was a lower level of D-list celebrity than he became in the mid-2000s? Good on Taking Max Sunday. Wonder how much cash they had to give him. Head Club. I'm just going to say this is the closer. The version I had when I was a kid didn't have the Ballad of Sal Villanueva, and so I'm not going to talk about it because this is my channel. Head Club might be a bit of an underrated track. It's a really good song, but I'd say more importantly than that, it's a perfect closer. I love when bands put a song at the end of an album that feels like a period at the end of the sentence, and the hints are all over the place that this is where we are leaving. There's a pace to the opening lyrics that add a sense of urgency. And the bridge lyrics seem to reflect a fatigue that even the listener might be able to relate to. Can't say I blame you, but I wish that I could. I'm sick of writing every song about you. I think that's perfect for an emo record that's been kind of sappy, as they tend to be. And at the end, it's kind of like, goodbye, we, we got to get over this. We got to do something else. 
I can't be mad about this girl for our falling out forever. I can't be mad about my former bandmate and our struggles forever. But it's emo, so maybe I can. But for the moment, maybe it'd be time to turn on some, I don't know, the Get Up Kids or something. Lighten the mood. And the song actually closes with a really passionate command. Don't call my name at your window, I'm leaving. And he really belts it out, and it's really passionate. And I didn't really know until doing the research for this video that that's actually a line lifted from the original emo, Johnny Cash. That's not a slight at Johnny Cash. I actually love Johnny Cash. And yeah, he is the original emo. Look it up. Facts. And just like that, Taking Back Sunday declares that it's over and they are leaving. And we got to move on to something else. Man, it was really fun going back and revisiting this record. I would say this and their follow-up record are two albums that I could put on at any time, listen to them from beginning to end, sing along with every lyric, and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy myself. Again, as I mentioned at the top, I understand that people might not like emo. I don't always really like emo, but this is a really good record that really holds up really, really well. I used the word, I used the word really like 75,000 times in that sentence. Man, if only like there was another YouTuber that could be doing the call and response back and forth. Like, this is really good. No, it's not. I don't know. I'm having trouble ending these videos lately. Maybe I should get a grip. But that is going to do it for me this week. I will talk to you next time.